What's going on guys? So today I'm going to show you how to make a pen out of coffee beans. This is a really cool process and the pens look great when they're finished so let's get at it. I'm starting off with some stabilized coffee beans. Now these are stabilized using a cactus juice resin and vacuum chamber and this impregnates the coffee beans with a resin that is then baked to harden the coffee beans and make them a little more durable. Once I had the coffee beans stabilized, I added them to the silicone molds that would be used for the pen blanks and tried to make sure they were even across all three molds. I'm going to be using some Total Boat Crystal Clear and some KP Pigments for colors and making three different blanks at once. Now in this particular video, I'm going to make two of the three blanks into pens, but I started off wanting to make the green and the red and I also mixed up a really beautiful carbon blue and poured in and I will make this into another pen later on. When you're mixing up colors like this, make sure to completely mix in the colors and stir them really, really well. As the more you stir them, the more the mica breaks down and the colors become more complete. Now another thing is that when I get these poured, I will be using a pressure chamber and this will remove all the air bubbles from the blanks and from the epoxy and give me a nice solid casting. Another thing is that the colors themselves, when you do castings like this, they seem to darken just a little bit. So keep that in mind when you're picking your colors for whatever projects you're doing. When you do pours using light objects like these coffee beans, one thing you have to keep in mind is that they're going to float some. Now, for me, it didn't bother me as much because I didn't mind that differentiation and almost a hardened line where the pen would have coffee on one side and more color on the other. But if you want to keep more of a uniformed uh, mix of the color and coffee beans, you need to completely fill up the mold and then do like you'll see me doing and add something to hold the beans down. Now I did use the stir sticks from where I mixed in the color and some packing tape to hold down the coffee beans some just to kind of keep them a little bit past the halfway point but this seemed to work just fine and give me the effect I was looking for. After getting the stir sticks taped down to the mold so they would hold the beans where I needed them in the epoxy, I moved the mold over to the pressure tank and let the epoxy cure under about 55 pounds of pressure. After the epoxy was cured, I removed the mold from the pressure tank and then removed the blanks from the silicone mold. Now these release really easy and then after that it's on to the lathe and get to turning.
So now that the green pen is together, I'm going to work on the red one. And now this is going to be a really cool looking one. The coffee beans are really dark and the red, so it should look good together. That being said, keep in mind when you're casting things with epoxy, if you can do more than one at a time, you might as well. In, in my opinion, if you have the materials there to do it, why not do more than one? Not only that, but when you're doing epoxy pours and mixing epoxy, the smaller the amount you mix, the harder it can be to get a ratio correct. You can't get one third of an ounce dead on without a pump system, which Total Boat does have, but I usually just mix using the mixing cups for the larger pours. That being said, when you're turning on the lathe, if you're using a lathe or a carbide lathe tool, like what I'm using here from Rockler, make sure you have a nice sharp edge out front to give you a super clean cut and don't try to get too aggressive. Make lighter cuts and multiple passes and it will chew through the epoxy super fast. This carbide cuts extremely quick through the epoxy. As you get closer to your finished turn size, slow down, use your bushings. That's what they're there for. They're to guide you for the finishing diameter at the ends of the blank or the ends of the tube. So when you press the hardware into place, it fits nice and seamless. After that, also make sure to wear a respirator. If you're doing a CA glue finish or any kind of chemical finishes, it will kill your sinuses. I've had this happen and it's a horrible, horrible feeling. So make sure to wear a respirator and safety glasses. Be safe about it. Have some fun, make something cool. After it's all turned and polished up, it's gonna look really cool. All you've got left is to put it together using the pen press and that's all she wrote. So let's put this thing together. One thing to keep in mind when you're using a pen press, and I don't have this screwed down or anything, is it's nice to just kind of lay everything out. This is a slim line type pen. Um, I will have to look up the exact name of it. It is a uh, kit that you can get off of Rockler. And it's a really cool looking kit, but it, it's a twist pen design. So it has a tip, a transmission, a collar, your actual pen cartridge, your pocket clip and a butt cap. Now this particular one uses a little bit wider uh, section at the center for the barrel to line up for the correct width as it does for the tip, but that's fine. That's what your bushings are for. So to use a pin press, it's really simple. This is something that you can pick up at a bunch of different sites online. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but there's also a million different styles, whatever style you use. It all pretty much works the same way. When you're doing a twist pin like this, you want to pick the section that you're going to have as your tip, which in this case, I want this as my tip. And you're going to install the tip or press the tip into place first. For this particular one, I should be able to get away with just like that. There's a hole in the end of this rod that holds the tip in place, and then you just lightly press it. Make sure to not go crazy with this. Um, my first pin I ever did, I got a little overzealous and I warped the barrel, the barrel of the pin by pressing way too hard with the pin press. So make sure not to do that. After you get the tip in for these twist style pins, you're going to put in the transmission. Now this is the transmission. This is the piece that actually pushes the ink cartridge out the end of the tip as you twist the pin. So the brass end here will go into the same end of the same barrel, excuse me, on the opposite end of your tip. And this line, this indention here on the transmission will be your stopping point. That will be your depth gauge for how deep to press the transmission into the barrel of the pin. 
So just like with the tip, insert into the hole in the barrel. Make sure you've got enough room to fit it within the pin press. And for this one, you might have to kind of guide it and keep it from flexing or turning because it will try to flex around sometimes. Sometimes they fit without a hitch. Other times you have to stop them from flexing a little bit. So make sure to don't let it twist or pop out like that. As you can see, even people like me have trouble with it sometimes. And I'm gonna clean out the back of this barrel. As you can see, it's a little marred just from being on the, um, from being turned. So I'm gonna clean this out just a little bit. All right, so I just used the drill and the flattening bit that was used earlier to clean out the inside of the barrel. And that should, yeah, that, that's fitting much better. There was just a small bar, burr inside the barrel and that can stop your transmission from seating into the barrel of the pin and cause you a lot of problems. So now again, don't let the barrel twist. You wanna hold and make sure it doesn't flex and then it will just slide into place. And when you hit that indention, once the indention is lined up with the edge of the barrel, that's as far as you need to go. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to install the center collar over the transmission bar, and you're gonna install the pin cartridge. This simply slides into place in the back and then twists in. And now, just like with the other one, due to this one has a larger end than the other, you want to find which one is going to, you wanna make sure to keep these lined up to where the larger end is fitting. As you can see, there's a big lip there. This is designed to line up with the butt cap. This end is designed to line up with this collar. So again, the collar goes over the transmission. The transmission will fit into this piece and again I might have to clean out another burr here yeah I'm gonna clean out this burr here so I cleaned out this burr just like with this end it was the larger ends so this that bushing is maybe got a rough spot or something that is pressing a burr out of the brass uh, barrel of the pin and as you can see now that just slides together now, to install your uh, pocket clip and butt cap, you want to kind of keep in mind where you want the pocket clip. Um, if you have any defects, if you have a certain side that you want to show more than others, or anything like that, you keep that in mind when you're lining up the pocket clip because that will determine um, pretty much where it's seen because most people are not going to be looking at the pocket clip. They're going to be looking at the rest of the pen. So just like with the others, line it up into the press, line up your pocket clip where you would like it to be, and press it into place. And just like with others, don't go crazy putting a lot of pressure. I've got two fingers on this. And that's all it takes to put one of these together now. You test to make sure it comes out correct. As you can see, the tip comes out just fine. So, we're good to go. So guys, there they are, the finished coffee bean pins. These are really cool looking, and I've enjoyed this project a lot. If you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, hit that like button. It really helps me grow, and I really appreciate that. If you want to keep up to date with new videos coming out, hit the notification bell. Also, go check out at JPayne Woodworking on Instagram for more content. And for detailed articles, videos, products, and gear, you can head over to jpainwoodworking.com and check out everything there. There will be links in the description below. And guys, I've had a lot of fun doing this, and I will see you on the next one.